Bless the Lord, O my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. God has done great things. And I want to say today, thank you, Lord, for the great things that you have done for all of us. But Lord, I want to personally thank you for what you have done for me and for my loved ones and for the church that you have allowed me to pastor. Thank you for every vision. Oh God, thank you for the casting of vision. Thank you, dear God, for the receiving of vision. And thank you for making vision a reality. Thank you. I give you the words of the songwriter, Ira B. Wilson. And the third stanza of that song, Make Me a Blessing, he says, Give as t'was given to you in your need. Love as the master loved you. Be to the helpless a helper indeed. Unto your mission be true. Make me a blessing. Make me a blessing. Out of my life, may Jesus shine. Make me a blessing, O Savior, I pray. Make me a blessing to someone today. That's my prayer, that God would make me a blessing to someone today. In our last devotion, I shared with you how we are to remember our pastors. I close by saying, remember their time, remember their work, remember their position. And then I said, remember they must give an account. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17, he said, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for their watch for your souls as they that must give an account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for it is unprofitable to you. Remember that they must give God an account of you. And the Word of God says that they may give that account with joy and not with grief. Why? Because when they give an account of us, and they give it with grief, he said, for that is unprofitable to us. To whom he is given the account of, it is unprofitable to them. So when the pastor gives an account to God of the members, if he gives it with joy, fine. But if he gives it with grief, there will be no profit to those members. It will be unprofitable to such members. So don't just think that they are there and they are doing nothing. And pastors, if you are there or if we are there and we are doing nothing, we too must give God an account for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ and every man must give God an account of the things done in his body, whether they be good or bad. A job is given to all pastors to do, to watch over the flock, to feed the flock of God. Oh, and I trust that you are doing that and doing that well. So don't just remember all your pastor failure. Remember the victories also. Sometimes we love to hang on to what went bad, and we fail to see all the things that went right. We fail sometimes to see the victories after the first day of victory. But these things we can look back to and encourage us to go forward. So we must remember our pastors. There is something else the scripture says that we must do. Before I go on, let me say this. I think one of the ways that one can remember their pastor, remember his birthday. Remember his anniversary if he's married. Remember him on these days and encourage the man of God. For it means so much to be encouraged by his people. Don't just start to do it today and drop by the wayside tomorrow. Remember your pastor. And then chapter 13 and verse number 17, obey them 
that have the rule over you. So, secondly, obey your pastor. First, remember him. Second, obey him. Now, obedience to authority runs contrary to human Adamic nature. Yet God is not commanding something which is impossible to do. Whenever God puts us to do something, or He tells us to do something, or He commands us to do something, what He's commanding us to do is always possible. So He's asking us to do that which is right, and He's asking us to do that which is possible. May I say, if the elders, pastors, or bishop are leading in a godless spiritual manner, they must be obeyed by the members of the congregation. If they are leading, whether you call them elders, pastors, bishops, we have a responsibility to obey those that have the rule over you. I know that these are the days that some people are very disobedient, especially when it comes to the house of God. The man of God, he gets a vision from God. He wants to lead in this particular way. Some others in the congregation don't like the way he's leading, and they want to lead in another way. Folks, that is so wrong, and God will not allow that to go unseen. Some may not like how the pastor is doing things. Some may not even like the pastor or the pastors, but make sure you love God, and if you love God, you will obey His word. Everyone have a res responsibility to be in a church somewhere, but you also have the privilege of choosing what church that you want to be a part of and who will be your pastor. That's a choice that one has made for himself or for herself. If you cannot obey them or obey him that you put yourself under, then the right thing to do would be to find yourself a pastor that you would put yourself under for you to obey. You have to obey the word of God. He said, obey them that have the rule over you. Some people may say, me, I will never follow him. I will never obey him. Oh, that's not getting after the pastor. That is really trying to get after God because he is the one who said, obey your pastor. God in his wisdom has provided authority, whether established in the home, in civil government, or in his church. It is provided to bring order out of chaos cause God requires that his authority be obeyed. Sometimes some folks feel like they don't want to be under such authority. If we see authority in the right sense, we would see authority as an umbrella of protection that when the sun is hot, you can put the umbrella over your head and it takes away the heat from you. Or when it rains, you could put the umbrella up and over your head that when it rains, you won't get wet. But if you choose not to be under the umbrella, you may have the umbrella in your hand, and you choose not to open the umbrella and the rain comes down and you don't have nowhere to shelter, you are going to get soaked. And if the sun is hot and you choose not to open the umbrella, then you're going to feel the heat of the sun. So look at authority as an umbrella of protection and not something just to dominate you. So remember, obey your pastor. Whoever he is, he's a man, but obey him, obey him, obey him. In some cases, she may be a woman. Obey those that have the rule over you. Our Lord and Savior, we come to you today. We thank you for the instructions in your word. 
And as I share them with these, your people, I pray, dear God, that they'll be shared so simple that everyone listening would understand and agree. And God, if there are changes to be made, that the changes will be made and things will go better at the house of God, with the people of God, if there are such situations where their those who are not obeying the man or the men that you have placed over them. Have you way with us now. We love you and praise you as we continue to share in these devotions. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for sharing. Oh, for some of you, you will listen again. Well, you are like me. I listen more than once. God bless you. Share with a friend and a loved one. Have a great day. I'll be back next morning.